BBC News with Gareth Barlow. The World Health Organization has warned that nearly one and a half billion people could die early because the, the research says Saudi Arabia and Iraq are among the worst countries for inactive. Pentagon arranged the assassination of the Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad. Author, the veteran journalist Bob Woodward, said the Defense Secretary James Mattis told him that Mr. Trump had made the demand attack in Syria last year. The president has described the book as a con. A fleet of speedboats is ferrying thousands of stranded passengers from the typhoon to hit Japan for 25. National Airport lost its link to the mainland when high waves and strong winds drove a tanker into a bridge. Typhoon JB has so far killed 10 people and left hundreds more injured. South Korean envoys have visited between their leaders. The visit comes as attempts to get the North to abandon its nuclear weapons program. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, says he's hoping to reset America's ties with Pakistan when he meets the new Prime Minister, Imran Khan, on Wednesday. In January, when the Trump administration cut more than a billion distance, accusing Islamabad of failing to act decisively against militants. Feuding French and British fishermen will hold talks in London today to try to avert further confrontations over scallops. Tensions flare. Intelligence to tell the difference between sharks and dolphins in Australia. The act fishes. Many thanks, Gareth, for the latest hello and welcome to Newsday. Shaima and Lawrence with you this morning. We start in South Africa in a moment. We'll also head to the Philippines, Denmark and the Central African Republic. Sports news of why amateurs are getting to represent Denmark. In rowing, a rowing, sorry, a rowing robot also on the way. That's Newsday over the next half hour. Well, let's start with some economic news from South Africa. It's officially in recession. Now, officially, what that means is that two quarters show negative growth. It's going to be disappointing. Cyril Ramaphosa as the country president. An era of... This is the opposition democratic alliance. Uh, Soli Malatsi, who joins us now. Isn't it too early to him in? I think, you know, it, it's an indication that the agency administration is uh, no longer uh, for, our, for our country and for attracting the kind of investment that our country needs in order to inspire, you know, investment in our economy, you know, to create jobs, um, to tackle corruption, and to... And it just indicates that, you know, while the president of the country may have changed, attitudes in government and poli government policies haven't changed. And it speaks to um, the ANC's list. It's no longer the party to fix South Africa. But would you do anything different? Absolutely. I mean, there are fundamental things that, that we would do differently. Um, one also indicates to taking corruption, um, towards cutting the size of cabinet, uh, making sure that we've got a lean administration. Um, we'll also, you know, do things differently in terms of how we manage our state-owned enterprises, because many of these state-owned enterprises, to be quite frank, are not sustainable, and we would, you know, privatize some of them, including South African Airways. Okay, uh, many thanks. Um, and uh, sorry about the quality of the line, Solly. It, uh, if it was better, we would have stayed with the conversation a little longer. Uh, Solly Malazzi, spokesman for the opposition DA, taking a chance to um, have a go at not only Cyril Ramaphosa, but more precisely the ANC administration of South Africa, uh, officially is in recession, uh, two successive quarters of negative growth. <laughs> The Filipino Senator Antonio Trelanes has an interesting track 
Yes. In the Philippines, he twice led a mutiny against a previous leader, Gloria Arroyo, <laughs> accused current Duterte of benefiting from the illegal drugs trade. So the president has canceled the amnesty even for by publishing Presidential Proclamation 572 in the Manila Times. Signed by the president, it says Senator Trelanes, uh, uh, Trelanes' amnesty is void because he hasn't satisfied its conditions. So 40 soldiers turned up at the Senate to arrest him. Uh, let's speak to Criselda Yabis, a journalist and author. Uh, Criselda, where is Mr. Trelanes now? Has he been arrested? and apparently it's the Senate that's holding